Hello, let's get right into it. I'll link everything in the description. First, download Throttle Stop. You can pick the nearest server here and then go to your downloads folder and extract the folder because it's a zipped folder. Now, wherever you place the extracted folder is where the program will basically be installed. Um, I'd like to put it in my program files folder, but you can put it wherever you want ThoughtOfSoft to be installed in. Let's go ahead and launch ThoughtOfSoft.exe and you can read the warnings if you'd like. And ThoughtOfSoft is now installed. At the top left, there will be four profiles that you can configure. We'll only be looking at the performance and the battery profiles as I think these are the most relevant. But you can configure the others on your own if you'd like. In the section underneath, there will be many functions we won't touch today. But if you want to know more about what each function does, then I will leave a link in the description. For the most part though, I'll only talk about the parts that are relevant for most people. Now let's click turn on. First, speed shift EPP should be checked and speed step should be unchecked. Speed Shift is a newer version of Speed Step and was introduced in Skylic, which was a 6th generation, so we don't need to use Speed Step. Uh, I have a 6th generation CPU, and to check on that, you can go into Task Manager and then see that I have the i5-6300HQ. Now go into TPL and check both Speed Shift and enable Speed Shift when Throttle Stop starts. Apply and press OK. You can see that I can change the numbers here, and the numbers go from 0 to 255. What speed shift does is it controls the behavior of the clock speed of the CPU. If I set it to 0, you can see that my CPU is running at 2800 MHz, and that's because my CPU is capable of reaching 2.8 GHz with an all-core load. Um, different CPUs will have different max boosts, but basically setting it to 0 will max out the clock speed at all times. On the other hand, if you set it to 255, the clock speed will stay at the minimum, which would be around 800 megahertz. So since we're in the performance profile, we want to make sure that we get the best performance. I would recommend any value from 0 to 80, but nothing past 80, as you can start to limit the maximum clock speed if you go any higher. I usually use 20 so that it allows the clocks to drip down slightly when idling. Oh, by the way, some people are going to tell you to disable turbo to improve thermals or battery, but don't do that. Disabling turbo will just lose you a lot of performance. Let's go ahead and make the profile for the battery mode as well. Um, same thing here, we want to uncheck speed step and check speed shift. Remember, 0 keeps the clock speeds high and 255 doesn't let it clock up. Since we want to save battery and we don't care about performance too much, I'm going to set this value to 160. It just works for me, but you can play around with these numbers. Um, basically, you want to set this number higher if you want to save more battery, but you lose CPU performance. For me, 160 doesn't feel slow, um, and it still saves battery. You can see that my clock speed drops, and going back to the performance profile will push the clocks back up. One last thing, let's go ahead and check this top box and set Windows to Power Saver to preserve battery, and then do the same for the performance profile, except we'll set that to high performance mode. Alright, if you click on FIVR, this is where the main undervolting will happen. At the top left, you'll see four profiles again. Um, at the bottom left, you'll see the turbo ratio limits. Um, I want to explain this. People will tell you to mess with this, but if your CPU is locked, don't touch it. And a locked CPU means that your CPU is not overclockable and most laptops are locked. Um, you can tell if your CPU is unlocked if there is a K designation at the end of the CPU name. So mine is a 6300HQ, so it's locked. What the turbo ratio limits does is it adjusts the maximum boost that the CPU can boost to, depending on how many cores are active. At the top is the maximum boost of the CPU. Then one core is 3.2 gigahertz, two cores is three gigahertz, three cores is 2.9 gigahertz, and loading four cores will be 2.8 gigahertz. This is why I was running at 2.8 gigahertz because I was loading all four cores. Uh, you don't want to lower these values because it will decrease the performance and um, in order to improve thermals there are other ways that you should do. In the middle is the undervolt section. At the top you can see that we can control the voltages of each of them and we'll be undervolting the core and the cache. I'll put a link to an explanation of what undervolting is in the description if you're curious but uh, first let's undervolt the core. Check Unlock Adjustable Voltage, so we have control over the voltages. Then under Offset Voltage, we want to move the slider left to decrease the voltage. Uh, so 
some starting points for the offset are negative 50 millivolts for U series processors, negative 50 millivolts for 10th gen H series processors, and negative 100 millivolts for other H series processors. Uh, you can tell by going into task manager and you can see that mine is an H series processor because there's an H after the numbers. Then go into CPU cache and put the same value as the core value. Well, you don't have to keep the core and the cache the same value uh, to keep this video from being too long. Let's just keep it the same for now. If you have 8th and 9th gen CPUs, uh, usually, usually the core can undervote a bit further than the cache. But again, for this video, I'll we'll just keep it the same for now. Then you want to test for stability in increments of negative 10 millivolts. So for my 6300 HQ, I want to start at negative 100 millivolts and test. And then go to negative 110 millivolts and test. Then negative 120, etc. Uh, I know mine can go to negative 150 millivolts, so I'm going to increase the range and then put it there. Then I'll go into cache and keep it the same value. Next, let's undervolt the battery profile, and I'll do the exact same thing here with the core and the cache. Now, before we apply at the bottom right, click on Save Voltages After Throttle Stop Exits. Uh, with this option, you'll have to close and reopen Throttle Stop in order for the voltages to save. But we'll use this option for now because it prevents unstable voltages from saving. In order to test the stability of the undervolt, you want to go into TS Bench. Then click start, and then this test will do a whole bunch of calculations and spit out a score. Uh, however, you don't really care about the score too much. What you're looking for is whether the computer crashes or if the test finds any errors while doing calculations. So if it does, then it'll say error. Uh, this means your CPU isn't stable because it's making errors in its calculations, which you don't want. Um, if you get an error, then you undervote it too far. So let's say my negative 150 millivolt crashes. Uh, then I probably want to put it back to negative 140 millivolts and then test again. If you don't get any errors, you're probably stable and you can try to undervolt more. For example, if negative 150 millivolt was stable for me, then I can try negative 160 millivolts. One more test after TS Bench is idle testing. Um, so we're, because we're using an adaptive undervolting, it lowers the voltage across the entire voltage curve. So lower loads will use less voltage, and then higher loads will use more voltage. Uh, we don't want it to crash at lower voltages, so idle testing is when you close down all your programs and background programs in the taskbar, and then just let it sit for like two minutes. See if it crashes or not. Uh, the only way to know if you're truly stable is to keep using the computer normally and to see if it crashes or not, but these two tests will get you like 90% of the way. You may crash even if TS Bench has no errors, for example. Um, lastly, I want to mention that I've seen VRM throttling occur due to too much undervolt a couple times when undervolting more than negative 150 millivolts. Um, this doesn't mean it will happen, I'm, it's just something to look out for. So make sure your clock speeds aren't dropping and such, and everything looks all good when undervolting. Okay, so moving into the TPL part, this is the turbo power limit. This is where you control the power limit, which is the limit to how many watts your CPU is allowed to utilize. Um, firstly, you want to unclamp the power limit. Now at the top right, the, this number is how many watts your CPU is allowed to pull for long periods of time. And then right below that is the Turbo Boost Short Power Max, which is the wattage the CPU is allowed to pull for a short period of time. This is useful for sh burst performance situations, while the long power limit will be utilized for constant loans, such as gaming. To determine the value that you should set for these numbers, you first want to stress test the CPU and GPU to see how many watts your laptop can handle. And I'll link a stress test in the description you can use. Remember, wattage is heat. So how many watts you set here is how much heat your heatsink can dissipate. In order to get the settings to apply, go back to FIVR, and then check the Disable and Lock Turbo Power Limits box, and then click OK. You want to adjust this value so you aren't thermal throttling after 10 minutes of stress testing. If you have thermal headroom, then you can feel free to raise the power limit so you get more performance out of the CPU. Um, if you are thermal throttling, then lower the value. I do want to note that some laptops have locked power limits that you can't change, so this may not necessarily work for you. A useful tool here is the Limit Reasons panel, which is located right above the FIVR button. This is simple to read, so if the notification is red, then it means the limiter is happening right now. If it's yellow, then it means it occurred at some point in the past, but not right now. 
For example, if you're running a game and it says thermal throttling in red, it means you're thermal throttling. <laughs> if you then close the game down, the indicator then becomes yellow to let you know that it was thermal throttling at some point in the past. As for the indicators, thermal means thermal throttling. Um, PL1 is the long power limit, PL2 is the short power limit, and EVP other stands for electrical design point and usually relates to the current limit. So if EVP other lights up in all three columns here, it may mean that you're current limited. It lights up for me here because I have no idea, it, but it doesn't mean anything is throttling, so. <laughs> now remember, uh, current is electrical amps. So if you're seeing that, then try to go back to P TPL, and then under primary plane power limit, uh, you'll see PP0 power limit. So try to raise this number and see if it helps. Um, it should get rid of the, the EDP other warnings in all three columns. Okay, now you want to go into options, and on the left side, you'll see the interface personalization. Below that, you can rename the four profiles, although we only touched on performance and battery. Um, in the middle is options for the notification area icon, and then at the top right, we want to set the profiles to 1, being the performance profile for AC. And when we're on battery, we want a battery profile, which is 4. I'm going to check start minimize, but that's up to you. Uh, click OK. And then let's go ahead and test if this works by unplugging the charger. You can see that the battery profile is now active and our clock speed and power also dropped to save battery, so it's working perfectly. Um, make sure this works so you don't drain your battery while you're using it on battery. And then the last step is to launch Throttle Stop when you boot the laptop. So go ahead and open this link in the description, and then scroll down to the second post where it says how to start Throttle Stop with Windows. Once you set this all up correctly, you can basically forget about Throttle Stop. So it'll launch when you turn on the computer, and then it'll just apply all of your settings. And that's pretty much it. Um, if you have any questions, obviously ask me. But hopefully this was uh, in-depth enough for you to understand. And yeah, thanks for watching.